Hey, what's up, fasting friends? So, I love films, and I love documentaries. Like, love. Love, love. Love, love, love. It's a huge part of my life, and I recently thought about all the documentaries that helped me get through some of the longer fasts. I forgot, you know, I do make movie lists, so why not combine the two, you know? Just, there are so many health-related and engaging documentaries, it was kind of tough to narrow the list down. One of the first things I did was to eliminate series, and health docs that skewed towards food porn, because I know that can be a little triggering for some. There aren't many docs on fasting specifically, so I try to have variety when rounding out this top 10 list. A lot of these films are free to watch too, so I'll try to include links in the description. Uh, without further ado though, here's the list. Number 10, Fat Fiction. You look at the data of ever-increasing obesity and diabetes, and you just think, maybe we're being told the wrong advice. We've been told forever that fat's gonna kill you. There's incontrovertible evidence that saturated fat is bad. Over and over and over. You're fat because you eat too much fat. So low fat, low fat, low fat, low fat, low fat. It's hard to think of another policy that has caused so much harm. It addresses the food pyramid that we're all too familiar with and convincingly argues that it should be flipped upside down. It's definitely a pro-keto film, but there's some good info on ingesting fat and how it was falsely demonized. Dr. Fung makes an appearance here. It also puts a few people on the keto diet for a week with before and after results. I know everyone loves that. And it's a good mix of historical context with interviews of a variety of health specialists. I was following the government guidelines. It's just, to me, unbelievable. Like they say, you can't outrun your fork. It's really just terrible science. It's total sheer madness. Number nine, globesity. The weight of the world is shifting in ways that will surprise and perhaps even shock you. No country has managed the transition to get rid of hunger without it shifting to obesity very rapidly. It takes us around the world from Mexico to China, Brazil, and India, exposing the infiltration of huge food conglomerates like Nestle. It's actually alarming to see history repeating itself as these food giants implement the same exact strategies as big tobacco. It really is like time traveling as they get these developing countries addicted to products that are clearly detrimental to long-term health. They are as bad as tobacco and alcohol. People ultimately have the responsibility to decide what enters their body, but as stated in this film, to paraphrase, uh, is there really freedom of choice without being given all the facts? Number eight, Super Size Me 2, Holy Chicken. Has fast food gotten healthier? Absolutely. Has fast food truly turned a corner? To find out, I could go back on an all fast food diet but something tells me this calls for a different approach. I want to start my own fast food restaurant. You're crazy. Yeah. You've probably seen the original where Morgan Spurlock subjects himself to a McDonald's only diet to ill effect. This time he decides to join the chain by opening up a chicken sandwich joint, joining in on the recent craze. We get an inside look at industry practices where he gets away with so many surprising and misleading things. He basically dupes his customers at Holy Chicken into believing he was a natural and healthy alternative to fast food. The marketing and product development aspects of his journey make for an interesting film. It's labeling. What's the smallest space we could give them that would still be quantified as free range? Free range. Number seven, fed up. There are 600,000 food items in America. 80% of them have added sugar. Your brain lights up with sugar just like it does with cocaine or heroin. You're gonna become an addict. You end up with one of the great public health epidemics of our time. This stock is actually quite popular and largely focused on sugar and childhood obesity. It's sad to hear parents saying it's cheaper to buy prepared food over fresh. As someone who grew up poor with a parent lacking a nutritional education, that part really hits home. Breakfast and dinner was full of Jack in the Crack dollar menu items, so much so that it's somehow warmly nostalgic as I think about their Jumbo Jacks. I'm kind of just glad the lack of money forced me to skip school lunches starting in middle school as those meals didn't appear much better. 
Fed Up touches on the lack of government foresight. It addresses the problems of the phrase, eat less and exercise more. The struggles with obesity are personified in a few kids scattered across the US. And although some of the content may make you cynical, it's through the story of these kids that give inspiration. It also shares some basic things everyone should be doing more of, like cook real food, buy product with the lowest number of ingredients, and definitely, Try to avoid sugar. The message that's been pushed on us, it's your fault you're fat. Shouldn't be so hard to get them to run around and play, right? Forget about it. Number six, gut reaction. Could what we eat be the ideal ingredient for treating many medical conditions? Makes a compelling case for gut health, eating upwards of 50 grams of fiber, and is a great intro in understanding the microbiome and its importance. We follow Dr. Graham Phillips as he takes us on a journey from being covered by microbes at birth to the novel idea of fecal transplantation. Um, ew? There are also lots of interesting mouse studies shown as well as some before and after human experiments. I've been doing some research on the topic and I'll soon share my initial readings of the microbiome, but this documentary supports the idea that the gut has a profound effect on mental health and inflammatory diseases. If you're going to do a long fast, this is also a useful reminder that refeeding is an important part of any fast as your body rebuilds some of its foundations. Number five, fasting. I went seven days and lost 20 pounds. I lost 40 pounds. I never gained it back. I've lost close to 100 pounds still counting. It's probably the most modern doc we have on fasting and honestly has a few things that could be improved in my humble opinion. Some of the music doesn't fit the tone, the visuals are quite cinematic, which is refreshing, but there are also some silly reenactments and the slow-mo is kind of overused. There are pacing issues and the story could use work making the mains more compelling. It's a bit more style over substance and sometimes plays a bit like an infomercial for Prolon or for facilities like True North. So why is it on the list? It's still reaffirming. It also talks about some really negative fasting experiences, which is kind of rare. It's one of the few fasting films. Oh, opportunity. It's one of the few full featured fasting focused films. I wanna make a full featured fasting focused film. Should I make a fasting documentary? Should I? Let me know. Anyways, back to the film. Dr. Longo and Dr. Fung are here too. So that's a plus. Jesus Christ, the prophet Muhammad, and Buddha probably only agreed on one thing, and that was the power of fasting. Number four, the C word. It ain't what you think, or is that just my filthy, filthy, dirty brain? It's actually a really heavy subject discussing cancer and death, but it is kind of offset by a soothing Morgan Freeman as a narrator. What I'm about to unfold for you is a story. It is a scientific story, but it is also a very personal story. I'm Dr. David Servant Schreiber. 16 years ago, I was diagnosed with brain cancer. We follow his emotional journey as he discovers things like the fact that we all have cancer cells from a very young age, and that one out of two will actually develop a clinically expressed uh, form of cancer. He develops the anti-cancer method, which focuses on diet, exercise, stress management, and toxins. And throughout all that, we go through the pushbacks, the doubters, the highs and lows surrounding him and his family. I left with a greater appreciation and awareness of just how important it is to treat our bodies better. Number three, facing the fat. Wait, you're talking about doing a water fast for 40 days? Mm -hmm. Here we follow Kenny, an obese 32 year old who decides to do a water only 40 day fast and then goes for longer. The introductory montage of the public giving their opinions on his idea is just hilarious to me. You don't have any food, you're gonna die soon. What you're doing, I would never ever consider other people to do. Kenny is funny, charming, and smart. He's a great main propulsion for this film and just basically a rock star in my book. This could have easily made it to number one on the list. I find watching someone else's fasting journey a great motivator to stay the course when I'm on a longer fast. It also promulgates the sheer cost of obesity in the US, upwards of 80 billion a year at the time. It's made even more interesting by the reactions of friends, family, and strangers. 
It hits the right tones at the right times and is a great, easy to follow, true life story. It's pretty epic and just might be the most inspiring journey on this list. Number two, eat fast and live longer. How good is the evidence that if someone like me were to start on intermittent fasting, uh, it would cut my risk of brain disease of broadly? If we go on a scale from poor to good to very good to excellent to outstanding, it's in the very good to excellent range. That's the way I would categorize it. This is the granddaddy documentary that re-sparked my fasting curiosity. It's got so many things going for it, from a good balance of science and fun with charismatic main Dr. Michael Mosley. It features interviews with rock stars in the field of aging like Dr. Longo. And Michael Mosley feels authentic in his quest to understand more about his body while he attempts to do a few fasts, vlog style. He also shares some before and after data, and this remains a pretty rewatchable documentary for me. Number one, science of fasting. Diabetes, hypertension, obesity, cancer. The number of illnesses is exploding and the consumption of medication as well. But maybe there's another therapeutic approach. An ancient method, praised by religions but long ignored by science. Fasting. If the last was the granddaddy, then this must be the grandmammy. And it's been responsible for getting me through lots of hunger pains. There's some history shared here, like a Siberian town where fasting was a public health policy based on 40 years of their research. There's a fasting center where in 15 years they treated 10,000 patients where they claimed after one or more fasting sessions, basically cleared two thirds of patients' symptoms like high blood pressure and diabetes. Though it's a great intro into fasting with pleasant animation to aid in explanations, it's also quite informative and lives up to having science in its title. It goes into the relationship between fasting and cancer therapies. This is the doc where I found the graphs of cancer cell expressions during a fast that I talked about in one of my fasting videos. It's definitely more fact than moving, but you know, if you're into fasting, this should be moving nonetheless. Plus, long goes here again, and there are penguins. So that's it, that's the list. Obviously, I'd love to hear your favorites or maybe some films that I might have missed. And if you're in the middle of a fast now and things are getting difficult, stay strong, friend. Drink some water. And unless you feel truly sick, watch one of these documentaries. See how you feel afterwards. Thanks for watching. <laughs>